went out with my friends one weekend in high school and came back very late. I didn't want to wake my mother up by going through the front door, so I went around the back to use the patio doors in the back. There's a separate, two-bedroom house in our backyard. This is where my older sister lives by herself. I saw it walking towards the patio doors when I passed her house and noticed all the lights in her house on and the front door wide open. I figured she was going out that night and was on her way out the door. I thought about saying hi, but then I realised something was off. It was dead silent, like the house was empty. Why would she leave her house like that, with the door open and all the lights on? Who does that? Maybe... Of course, at 16, I like to entertain the possibility of something exceptional happening whenever I had the opportunity, because it made life extraordinary. Every knock at the door could be a long lost brother come home at last, and any package in the mail could contain a severed finger wrapped in a ransom note. I had, no doubt, an unfettered imagination. In two adolescents, I learned to not let it take over my life, especially in situations like this. But the silence was deafening and all I could picture was a gloved hand struggling to say cupped over my sister's mouth, a knife pressed to her throat. I kept every cell in my body absolutely still to better listen for movement, trying to drown out the symphony of crickets and other things preventing me from knowing what was going on. I reasoned that she probably left the house in a hurry or was in the main house until I heard a very defined creak in the floorboards break the silence. Half a minute later, I heard another. Whoever was just out of my view wasn't walking. They were sneaking. Aware, someone else was there. I stayed in the dark, avoiding the spotlight created by the light coming from the doorway. I pressed flat against the side of her house and picked my head in through the doorway. I caught a glimpse of the figure moving into the other room just as I peeked in, certain only that someone was now in the guest room, waiting for me to move. My rational voice suggested that it was one of her friends, drunk and in the mood to play games with a teenager's imagination. Knowing someone was hiding in the dark, in the room next door would terrify any rational human being. But I blame the feeling of invincibility that comes with youthful naivety and why I decided to actually step into the house. Believing that this was the big Hollywood role I was destined to play. I was the star in a slasher movie. I couldn't die because the film goers still wanted to see me running, hiding in closets crying, unmasking the killer, and delivering a witty grip before blowing the killer up with seven tons of TNT, or something. Even if it was dangerous, nothing was going to happen because it was happening to me. The floorboards were creaking louder, almost as if on purpose. As I sneaked up to the guest room, whoever was in this room knew I was there and coming for them. The guest room door was open and the lights were off. I could see only darkness and my own silhouette, sharp and black against the light coming in from the guest room. The sight of myself and how revealed I felt seized every inch. I shrunk, expecting to see the silvery glimmer of a knife in that unforgiving darkness. They knew I was standing now, at least, I thought. I expected to die any second, so I did not move. I just scanned the dimness in a frenzy, eyes maddeningly wide. In what was maybe 10 seconds standing in the doorway, 
paralyzed by the idea of someone staring back at me, hidden in the dark. I had felt an hour pass. Nothing had happened. All my blood was still accounted for, so it was my move. I didn't dare take my eyes off the dark, so I felt along the wall for the light switch. My hands shook so much that I almost laughed. I was so wrong for thinking all those slasher film victims were overreacting. You really do panic in the face of death and lose control of what you do. I had never felt so immersed in the unknown. I found the switch and flipped. I saw movement and closed my eyes, bracing myself, and then heard the whirring of the ceiling fan. The second I possessed that it was the fan moving, I felt like the child that runs to his parents' room about seeing something under the bed. This situation was almost too soon. Something I couldn't handle. Anybody who was in this room was hiding, scared of me, and therefore, currently, I'm not a match. Even better, I hoped. It could be someone playing a joke. I turned the light on. It was time to stop playing around. Nothing. Awesome. What the hell is wrong with me? I thought. Then I felt my knees go weak, thinking about the shutter closet. It was immediately to my left, and the shutter door was open, so I couldn't see in it from the doorway. I took two steps forward, head turned. I see feet. He sees some part of my body, at least. There is another man in this room with me, and we are about to make eye contact, I thought. I didn't stop to think about how dangerous a person wearing sandals could actually be. My demand for closure prohibited it. His eyes were wide and watery from trying to see in the dark, just like mine. Like a mirror image, we both jumped and scanned each other's appearance, relaxing that the other was, at least the very least, a person. His arms were flat next to his sides, head tilted back, seized in fear, like I was. I assumed he wasn't a burglar. At least, he certainly wasn't dressed as one. He had on swimming trunks and a tank top, a towel around his neck and flip-flops, which is why I probably stuck around, thinking it was my sister's friend or something. Unfortunately, in terms of my own prejudice, He sort of fit the bill, statistically, for the race that most burglars could be described as. It kept me tense the whole time through, even if he didn't look like he had intent to maim me. What are you doing here? I asked. It took him a second. Nothing, man. I was dying of thirst, so I just came in here to get some water. He said, like a child caught in the dead of night with his hand in the cookie jar. For some reason, or probably just to stall, I asked the same question again, and he repeated the same answer. I looked down at his hands. His fingers were black, the way car mechanics do after handling grease all day. I looked back up at him and just mouthed, No, no flight. Here it was. I wanted it so bad. Here it was. My own little horror film. Running with no form. As fast as I could for my life. I expected to get shot in the back at any moment. I made it out of my sister's house and to the back door of the main house. I turned while running to see him. He was right behind me and I just hoped he was just going to book it and turn left because he was so close to me that he definitely would have caught me. Mom, there's a burglar in the house! I yelled as soon as I could get the patio door open. She came out screaming, the dogs barking behind her, adding to the chaos. I turned and locked the patio door. She grabbed the phone. 
we looked out the front window as low as we could and saw him kneeling at the corner of the house, hiding, waiting to see what we'd do. He grew impatient, hopped our fence and got into a little white sedan and left. The cops came an hour later, thinking that the burglar had already left by the time we had made the phone call. Of course, this gave the police plenty of time to get there, because deranged criminals that hide in closets would never think to come back to take care of eyewitnesses, right? Monday afternoon, after I come home from school, my mum tells me, I want you to watch the news at 6 today. I think they caught the guy who you ran into. 6pm rolls around and the top story is about a man who had gone on a crime spree over the weekend that ended in tragedy. I sat square in the middle of the sofa, cradling my head, hands over my mouth, bouncing my knee wildly, waiting to see his face. The man went into a random family's house, just like mine, and stole a car at night point. The family called 911 after he left. The cops spotted him on the road and tried to pull him over. He fleed and, in the pursuit, crashed into another car, killing the driver and putting the passenger, her child, in critical condition. Police say Rodney D. I stopped listening. It was him. They showed his mugshot during the report and I felt that dropping sensation in my stomach. It was him. I couldn't mistake it. This was the gaunt, terrified intruder I find, standing in my sister's closet, hiding two feet away from me less than 48 hours ago. To this day, I still wonder if the cops had showed up promptly would the woman he killed the day after still be alive? It's not a jab at how well the police did their work, but amusing about the crucial nature of communication skills and how neglecting them can put another's life in great danger. Fear for a burglar? Let's not meet. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment below. All feedback, good or otherwise, is always appreciated. If you have any creepy stories of your own or of any topics that you would like me to cover, feel free to send them in via any of my social media. You can find all links to my social media in the description below. Until next time guys, make sure you lock your doors, stay safe and I'll see you next video.